Okay guys, so I've been getting a couple of questions and I would like to address those questions now while I've got the time. Um, this is my box obviously. And um, this thing right here, this is something I put up when I had my apartment, okay? And I didn't own my apartment and I didn't want them to come in because they had the right to for emergency purposes or inspections or whatever. I didn't want the owners to actually come in and see this big box here with this going on and wires everywhere and I didn't want them to think that I was doing something dangerous. So I put this on here. I don't need it. I'm probably going to take it off. But uh, that's the only reason I put that on there. So that answers that question. Um, my ammeter is accurate. Um, so I have uh, used my um, voltmeter to test the amperage. This has a, a 10 amp DC, up to 10 amp DC. And with one panel, I'm getting uh, roughly six amps, and that does show up on this ammeter. So uh, I did verify that, in fact, uh, I am getting the amperage because somebody had uh, asked me how I'm able to get more than the advertised uh, wattage, and uh, you know, thinking that I was uh, running my bicycle generator at the same time or something. That's just not the case. Okay, this isn't a conspiracy. I'm not lying about this. Um, I am actually getting what uh, minimally I'm getting. I'm supposed to get out of the panels and more. I've seen this peak out around 33 amps. Right now it's running at about uh, 25 amps. Um, there is an overcast going on right now. Quite a bit of an overcast. So I'm not getting everything I could be getting, but uh, pretty close. Um, another question, where do I keep my batteries? Um, when this drops below 12.5, under load, then that's when I start cutting back on what I'm uh, using it for, okay? That's under load. Uh, out of load, I stop at 12.8, and that's exactly 80% of charge of the battery. And that's important to me because I want this battery to last for years and years, and I'm talking at least a decade out of this battery. Now, you might be saying, well, okay, well, you're limiting yourself because you're not taking it down to 50%, and that's not worthwhile. Well, for me, it is, okay, and that's just the way I'm going to do it, and I plan on getting many more batteries so that I can increase my, um, my total time of use. But during the day, like right now, I'm running two box fans, my computer, and my aquarium with a 200 watt heater. So I'm still able to sustain above 12.5 under load. Like right now, the heater and the aquarium just went off, so it's back up to almost 13. I'm able to sustain exactly where I want just because of the panels. Now, if the panels, if it was totally sunny out right now, um, there was no overcast, then I would have two box fans running, my computer and uh, probably a lamp or something because it generates too much electricity for what I have extension cords so you can see what all I've got plugged in here okay I got my computer on the blue one uh, the aquarium and a box fan uh, on the other one and then a box fan on the end here so that's what I'm running currently um, but uh, so anyway that's that's what I'm doing there okay um, my plan is to add many more batteries and what I'm going to do down the road is I'm going to tie this setup when I get more batteries into my main breaker box in the house. I'm going to use a breakout box, which if you're familiar with those, they're kind of like boxes for generators, backup generators. And I'm just going to tie it into the system and run everything that's 120 volts in the house off of the battery bank, basically. Okay, And uh, that's going to require several batteries, probably at least six batteries. Okay. Um, that's down the road. Okay, batteries are expensive. That's down the road. So right now it's extension cords. Um, the the next uh, question that uh, I have been getting is my uh, my three way switch, the off one two switch. This is a battery bank switch basically, but it still serves its purpose. I know that I don't have my grid tie inverter, but it still serves its purpose. Now I cannot use a grid tie inverter here, unfortunately. The micro grid tie inverters are not allowed by my electrical company and they weren't before but I was able to get away with it because I had an old analog meter that could spin backwards this new meter that I have here this digital meter will in fact alert my electric company when I feed back into the grid so unfortunately I cannot and you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars to have an electrician come out and get all the equipment installed yada 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 to get a two-way meter there's a lot of requirements so unfortunately I cannot feed back into the grid what that means is that I have to make sure that I'm using the energy that I am producing. And in the future, I'm going to get an a, a amp meter analyzer or watt meter analyzer that'll tell me what I'm using and what I'm not using. Because this charge controller, 
unfortunately does not come with those features but it is a very very efficient charge controller so that's one of the reasons it does not it is meant to charge the batteries and only charge the batteries and it has no special bells or whistles um, so yeah I mean that's uh, that's pretty much it for that I cannot grid tie any longer at my apartment I could now down the road when I start adding more and more batteries what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to build a cabinet for this entire thing I'm gonna be getting another pure sine wave inverter uh, I'm gonna go with a different company I like the Royal Power uh, uh, pure sine wave inverter but um, I need it to output 120 volts and this outputs at 115 which is fine for the little things that I'm doing around the house right now but when it comes to tying into the mains I need to get something that's gonna put out 120 not only that but I also need something that's going to be able to handle more than 1,000 watts or 2,000 peak. And so I'm going with a 3,000 watt inverter, pure sine wave. Um, but uh, so anyway, that's the future plan uh, as far as that goes. Um, I'm going to try to tap into my hot water heater, which is electric. But I don't know how I'm going to do that yet because this battery bank here, an inverter, is uh, about 50 feet from the uh, the hot water heater. So... 50 feet at 12 volts I would have to use some really thick wire in order to get that to work so I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that but uh, I will figure that out um, so anyway uh, yeah I mean that's really that's about it that's uh, those are the questions that I've gotten so far I'm very very happy with the setup I haven't finished with my conduit with these wires yet uh, I've been so busy but I am extremely pleased I am just putting out a, just a massive amount of electricity and it's just amazing to me. This is just a start of things. I can add another five panels on the roof. I can add wind generators. I mean, I'm just super pleased and the expandability options are just endless for this. So, um, yeah, hopefully that answers your questions. Um, yeah, my kids in the other room fighting like they always do. But uh, I do keep a close eye on this. I really do. I've got the computer in there running right now. If I see this drop to about 12.5, I'll start reducing the load. Um, and usually uh, I can get a little time on the battery, down to 80%, but really not all that much. I really need more batteries. So that's the key to this. I'm not using cheap deep cycle batteries that you can just get at some hardware store. I'm using high quality solar batteries that are AGM batteries, and I want them to last a long time. So. Anyways, uh, hopefully that answers any of your questions. If you have more questions, please let me know. But I am online with this thing, and I'm being really careful with it. I'm watching it close, and it is performing at, at beyond my expectations. So I am really, really happy. So, all right, guys, take care.